honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to record tonight before I sat down on my computer. And I decided I'm going to walk you through some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over trying to build out multiple SaaS products. And one of the questions I've gotten on Twitter and on my comments of like, how do I come up with ideas that could potentially make money? So let's start with the, the current approaches I've taken to generate some passive income, if you want to say. The first thing I've ever started with was a course. This was back a couple of years ago. I made a T3 stack course back when Theo was talking about it. And I decided to jump on that train. I liked the T3 stack and I built the course for it. Now, if we look at the total sales of this, about $10,500, right? And this is over, I first published it, what is this? April 16th of 2023. And we're at 2024 now. So it's so it's been over a year. And honestly, I don't know why people keep buying this. I, I literally updated the product description. I said, you probably shouldn't buy this. It's probably out of date by now. But people still, you know, buy it from my YouTube channel. I have it linked in a bunch of my videos. My, my most recent videos, I actually took it off because I just don't want people buying it. But I guess I could just disable it. But I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to milk that cash cow while I can, right? So let's look at how did I get sales, right? So YouTube is my main one for this product. People watch my YouTube channel. They want to learn something. They see a link that I have a course. They go and buy the course. It's only 20 bucks. Even if they don't like it, I mean, they're not like losing that much money from buying this course. Um, I also have like emails. I think I have like my own mailing list that I've sent emails out to people and they have bought that as well. And then just Gumroad recommendations, okay? So how did I come up with this idea? This one's pretty obvious. If you're a content creator and you're teaching, it makes sense to have some path, a marketing funnel to get people to buy a course. Now I launched this course back when I did not have many viewers or subscribers. I think I had maybe like 50,000 or like 100,000 or something. And so the outcome isn't as, as substantial that you might think. And you might look at this money and be like, oh, this is a lot of money. Uh, there's people who launch courses and make like up to hundreds of thousands of dollars or more, right? So I could try going down that path as well. And in fact, a lot of people keep asking me, can I make a course? Can I do a course? So I can still do that and I might do that. Leave a comment below if you want me to make a full stack course again, um, like a paid course on Gumroad. It'll probably be a little bit more expensive than this 20 bucks. So that is product number one. Again, this isn't a SaaS product. This is just me marketing some electronic goods that you can buy. And um, it's kind of low effort. I don't really market it, but if I wanted to, I could send out emails and get people to buy it. Now, after building out this course, I worked more on my first real SaaS product. And this was Icon Generator AI. You might ask, well, how did I come up with this idea? To basically use AI, I think I was using Dolly 2 at the time, to generate assets for people. Right? If I go to the, the community here, we have all these assets that people have been generating. In fact, I launched the Icon Generator before I launched the course. And the Icon Generator, if I go and look at how much money is made, let's go to Stripe real quick. And we are going to zoom out for the entire year. Let's just click on year to date, January 1st through September 6th. So year to date, gross volume of six thousand almost six hundred dollars right which is not too bad i mean i literally have not worked on this project for like over 12 months i think i got ddos at one point and i went through and did a little bit of refactoring so i want to get ddos again and i haven't touched this product since and let's go to all time this is the all time earnings i've made from this product and you'll see that it's it's dying out it's slowly dying out which um it makes sense there's just more ai products coming out that are better uh, people have learned how to generate their own assets using using dolly directly like that why would they go to my app when they can just use dolly directly right so at some point i might just kill off this product because i just don't see a very strong use case for it anymore um, but if i was creative i would probably try to clone the entire project and spin off different uh mini niches right so maybe not generating icons generically but you could do icons for game art you could do icons for something else like logos but yeah this is my first product and honestly you might think that the only reason i made this much money is because i have a youtube channel in fact if i go and look at where most of the traffic comes from it comes from organic google search so you just believe me that like you might think that because i'm a youtuber and i have viewers the only reason i'm getting sales is because I have a link to this product in my YouTube channel. That is not it. I literally have people from different places coming in, trying to generate icons, and they find my stuff through Google. The, so how do I know this? Well, I have Google Analytics set up with this the site. And if you go, the first top one is organic search. Okay, That is where all my traffic comes in, basically. Organic search. And then we have referral, which maybe that's coming from my YouTube links. We have direct, which I would think would be my youtube links we have organic social and organic video and this is the last 28 days i think i should actually zoom out to like the last 12 months and get a better understanding of what this data is 
So as you can tell, most of it comes from organic search, and then I honestly don't know what referral means. Um, maybe that is YouTube. You, someone who's smarter than me can tell me what referral is. So how did I actually market this thing? Honestly, I published a little bit on X, um, and I also published about it on my YouTube channel. I have links to it on my YouTube channel. But a lot of it was search engine optimization. I made sure that I went through this, this site, and I have a bunch of keywords in here that someone who's trying to get digital assets like icons this would index decently well. Now this landing page is actually pretty simple. If you look at it, it's so basic, but somehow I'm ranking pretty good in the search engines. How do I know that? Let's go to Google Search Console, which is another thing you should probably set up if you have a domain. And this is gonna give you insight into like, what are the keywords people are searching in Google to get to your site? Now, I think this is actually broken. I think I switched domain providers at one point because Google domains went out of business or they, they sold their company to someone else. So this doesn't work. Um, like I said, I haven't touched this project in so long. Let's go to uh, sort of like the starter kit. Let's look at this. So the starter kit, if you go and look at the top queries, you'll see that people are searching like WDC starter kit. So all this stuff, like people are actually searching very specific keywords because they know about my starter kit. Um, but on the other icon generate AI, like you'll see queries based on like digital assets, icons, AI generated icons, and then that gets organic traffic to my site. Okay, so again, search engine optimization is very important so that uh, the web crawlers know what your page is about. So that was like my first legit SaaS product that was credit based. There was just a goal I set. I said, I want to launch a product. I want to make my first dollar online because I've never integrated with Stripe before doing this. Um, and this was like my goal that I had, and I did it. I'm proud of that. It's not like world changing money uh, in terms of like software salary. But it's nice. It's a nice start. And anyone else can do this, right? You just learn how to code. You can get your stuff shipped out and start making some money. Um, so how did I figure out this idea? Well, I was scrolling through X. I would recommend if you're trying to figure out SaaS product ideas, you should be on X. You should be scrolling through X every once in a while. Um, you can find communities. You can join like builder groups where people talk about their products. Look at people's profile. Look at the profile. For example, this guy, he has something called auto shorts. 93k monthly recurring revenue that's pretty good right and so you can dive into his product and it turns out this product's gonna be very similar to what i'm working on for scary story generator so hopefully that's all clicking now go online and see what is already successful you could spend months trying to build your own thing ship it and then no one uses it but my recommendation and how i figured out how to build icon generator is that there's like a 16 year old who basically built a prototype for this and he got like thousands of dollars in sales within the first couple of days. And I'm like, dude, if a 16 year old can do this, why can't I? And so I basically built this in a weekend. I got it shipped out MVP. And ever since then, I mean, I just got a bunch of traffic to it. I also, you know, went down the whole like launch on product hunt thing, you know, tr try to figure out how that works. So it was fun. As another example, here's someone posting monthly recurring revenue of their SaaS product. Go and look at their product. Go understand what they do. See if there's an actual like need for this. Now also look for growth. Like this looks very stagnant over this time period. Look for growth and then you'll know that it's a product that's definitely worth like either competing in the same space with. There's nothing wrong with competing. This is capitalism, right? Find a product that works and just compete. Try to take a slice of that pie. All right, so that leads us to my second SaaS product. How did I come up with this idea? Well, I actually worked with Hosna on this, which is um, another YouTuber. If you've heard of her, I'm sure you have if you watched my content. So that leads me to Project Planner AI, which is another SaaS product that um, I worked on the start of last year. And basically, I had a, a goal. Again, I like setting goals. The goal was I want to make a product with monthly subscriptions. Okay, so I want to learn about Stripe subscriptions and I wanted to get my first monthly subscriber. So Project Planner AI, let's look at the income for this. Now, to be honest, this one's not bringing in too much cash, but again, I just had a goal of like, I want to build a monthly subscription-based SaaS product and try to get my first paying customer. Now, granted, I think a lot of the people paying for this are just like people who want to support uh, the work that I'm doing. I mean, we've got, I think like 24 subscribers currently, a lot of them are, are canceling. So there's some churn, but that's cool. It's fine. I, this was a learning experience and we built out an actual pretty legit product. I mean, if I go to this and log in, like this is where I was basically maintaining and managing all of my side projects. I had like a bunch of different stuff I was working on. I have my YouTube channel. I have icon generator. I have another thing I was working on thumbnail critique that I let die, the starter kit. And so we'd use this product 
to basically manage and maintain all the work that needs to be done. And how do we get this idea? Well, this was like a personal need. Like I kept on never finishing anything. And so me and Hosna worked on this together because we both had the same issue of like, can we build something that can help people take their idea and actually see it finish all the way through? Now, we haven't really worked on this much. I mean, but we we put in some a lot of damn effort into this. And I think we did a really good job. Like we have like a Kanban board. Uh, that's a little janky. Got to fix that. But we have like events. We had reports, analytics. Uh, there's also like a settings page. So I can go to the project settings and I can turn on like different things for features. Like when I say we did some work, like we did some work on this product. It's just unfortunate that I feel like we bit off too much. And this is one takeaway that you need to understand from this video is when you're trying to ship your first like SaaS product, you need to niche down. I would say pick something very simple. For example, Icon Generate AI. This is a great example of I niche down a lot. Just give me your money. You can generate an icon. And that worked out pretty well. This one is a little bit more complex, right? You have to convince people that they should use some type of project management software to be able to finish their projects. Sometimes this is more useful for teams. For a, you know, an entrepreneur or a one-man team, maybe they don't need something like this. They just have like a to-do list in a text file in their project. And so I think we bit off too much. Like we we went way too broad. We added way too many features to this. Um, so we're not really sure where to take this product. Maybe we'll continue it one day. Maybe we'll make it open source. Maybe we can work out some type of deal with uh, some of the tech we use to get like sponsored by and just get some monthly payments by those those companies. But there's ways to monetize this. We could add ads and just like make it free for anyone to use. Stuff like that. And then again, we did the same thing of like uh, we would market it on X every once in a while. We'd post a video of us working on it. Uh, I'd add a new feature. I'd talk about it and make a little video of it. One thing I highly recommend doing is you need to download something called Screen Studio or some type of nice screen recording software where you can record your screen and it like follows your mouse and it just looks really nice. It's a very necessary thing for marketing whatever you're working on. But at the end of the day, most of the subscribers for this product, I think were just like, hey, I want to support, you know, your channel. Let's just go ahead and subscribe for this, this product. Okay, so at some point during this whole journey, I was scrolling through Twitter, like always, and I saw Mark uh, Lou. Is that his name? Mark Lou. And I saw that he was making $60,000 a month from a starter kit. Now, to me, this feels a little fishy. Like, I'm not sure how he's making this much money and why people would buy a starter kit when there's literally like thousands of free ones out there. But I was like, you know what? Maybe I could try to do something similar with like a starter kit. But instead of charging my viewers like $169 or $200 for a starter kit, I said, you know what? I'm going to make it completely free. And so I worked on a starter kit in Next.js. It basically has a lot of the same features as ShipFast, but I mean, it's free. Literally, you can go, here's the GitHub repo. It's MIT license. You can go and clone this and you can get a completely working thing. Now, granted, I think he works on this full time. So like he probably has more stuff uh, out of the box. He's also using Mongo and Superbase. And I'm like, ah, eh, we're not going to use that. I, I don't think that's a good solution personally. I think using Postgres uh, is, is the right choice. And so I do have my own starter kit. It's a little bit different. Um, but if you want to buy uh, a walkthrough, so what I am working on is a Gumroad course that helps you walk through all the code and how to get this set up and deployed. I got nine videos so far with this, and I'm trying to work on it slowly and just like just add more content so people who are new to shipping a SaaS product can understand how it's done. But that's one of the current products I'm working on. Again, I found this by just scrolling through Twitter and I saw some guy making a lot of money. Uh, I probably could have made a lot more money if I followed the same avenue of like charging 150 bucks one time payment. I just, I like, I like people learning for free. I like the joke saying I'm a Christian in training. And so a lot of the, um, the things that I do, I, I just want people to learn how to code and I don't want to try to make a quick buck off of it, to be honest with you all. I probably could, I could probably figure out a way to make a lot of money off this. Um, but yeah, that's why it's free. So go check it out if you want a, a Next.js starter kit. I need to go through and actually start uh, making some more videos about this before people start giving me some bad reviews. Let's talk about the sales for the starter kit. Um, I do want to be transparent with you all. So let's go and select the starter kit instead. Now I just use Gumroad because like, I just feel like it's easier. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just look at how many sales we have for the starter kit. About 6,200. Okay. And you'll see the first couple of days of launching, like that's when you're going to get most of your traffic. Uh, let's just go back the last three months. But if you're not continuously marketing this thing, which 
personally, I don't want to do. I don't want to keep talking about this on my channel until the point where you unsubscribe because that's all I talk about. I don't want to keep posting videos on X and just like flood X with check out my kits, check out my kits. Like, I, I don't know. I could probably up my game, my marketing game. It's just like, I don't know. I just don't want to, honestly. So that led me to yet another SaaS product that I'm working on. This was, again, mainly for fun. Like, honestly, I don't think people will actually pay for this. I'm hoping when Halloween in October comes around, there might be some people who are like, oh, let's just play around, buy some credits. But I've been working on this scary story generator where you basically, you type in a story and it's going to generate a bunch of AI images using Replicate. And so you can basically come in here and I don't know if you see my story where I talked about Vim, but I literally typed all this by hand. This was all me, my creativity. I wrote out this story. I'm, an, I'm kind of impressed with uh, how, was, how this turned out. But you can kind of like write your segments and then you can regenerate the segments to get a nice AI generated artwork for it. And then you finally, you know, generate the video and that kicks off some processes behind the scene. And then finally you get a fully working video over here. So let's just go ahead and play this video real quick. The world of software engineering used to be easy before in our golden hours. We now I'll say I've made zero sales with this, but that's okay. This was a huge learning experience. I was able to make some YouTube content out of it. Um, I learned about Cursor. This is like during my Cursor phase where I was really blown away with how good Cursor the AI IDE was. And I built out most of this app using Cursor. But after Halloween in October when there's no need to make scary stories, my idea is to basically fork this entire project and make it more generalized. So instead of just scary stories, any type of story that you want, and you can have it auto-generate the story, which you can then publish to your social media. So there's still a lot of stuff I want to do on this, this app. For example, I want to be able to create TikTok, you know, vertical videos. Instead of just like 1080p videos, I do want the vertical videos where I could publish as YouTube Shorts. And I have a second channel where I've been kind of writing some scary stories and using this app to publish them. Which, by the way, is called like Scary Campfire Stories. Um, but here's my other channel. I got a random spike of views at one point, so I'm kind of kind of psyched about that. But but a lot of these I'm actually writing by hand, like I'm trying to craft out stories and just practice my ability to write because I, I enjoy it. It's fun. It's a little bit different from doing coding all day. And then I create a nice video for the stories that I wrote and I publish it on this channel. So at this point, this was more of a show and tell about like everything I've been working on. Hopefully, I would say the main takeaways from this video is scroll through social media, find what other people are building, and if you think the idea is good, use your skill set to replicate a MVP, get it out there, see if people like it. And if not, you can either decide to move on to something else or just keep on polishing it to the point where it is useful and people do like it. Okay, so that's where I'm at with Scary Story Generator is that although I have no sales, I'm seeing that on X, this guy's making some decent money from something similar. And I'm seeing a bunch of other applications pop up as well where people can kind of create AI generated stories and they publish it to their YouTube channel or they publish it to TikTok. But even though I'm saying like scroll through social media and get ideas, you can still put your own twist on it, right? This, I've twisted the idea that I saw about using AI to generate stories and I niched down because October's coming up and Halloween's coming up and a lot of people like Halloween. And on top of that, this isn't something that's like, oh, this is a silly niche. Like if you go to YouTube and search for Mr. Nightmare. Like this guy has millions of subscribers on YouTube and people like watching scary, you know, stories. I like listening to scary stories because it's just fun. Uh, at least it is for me. Maybe you don't care about it. So definitely find something that you're like interested yourself in. Don't just build something because you think it'll make money. Build something because you find it interesting and that extra creativity will just come naturally and that inspiration and motivation will just come because like you want to build what you're building. Again, that's kind of the journey of like how I have so many different projects and products. I just basically build something, I get it out there, and then I move on to something else. And what I found by doing that is every time you build something, you get it out there, you learn one or two new things. And then after a couple of years of doing that, you have this whole uh, a collection of knowledge base that you just learned, and then you can build basically whatever you want. Just need some time, right? You just need some time, and I can literally build anything I put my mind to. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my little rant. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, and yeah, go check out my products if you want. If not, I'll be okay. I work full time. Have a good day. Happy coding.